What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here today at the Nerd Castle with the first episode of Runers, which is a game by LGK Games, which is a little bit of a roguelite mixed with bullet hell, kind of like Gauntlet almost is how I would describe it to a lot of people, except that it's cell by cell, room by room based, Gauntlet, bullet hell, frenzy, just... It's, it's absolutely crazy, and then it also mixes in a little bit of almost like Magicka, where you combine spells together to create new spells, and so there's something like, yeah, there's 300 spells in the game. There's all kinds of stuff to fiddle around with, and so I figured, since nothing is coming out right now, I have been playing this on my own a little bit, and I figured I would do a couple episodes of this while we wait for, like, something a bit more beefy to sink our teeth into, because this is definitely kind of a... Oh, I don't know. This is kind of like a five-minute game that you play before you go to work and things like that. So there is a lot of depth here, and there is a lot of skill involved with that. I don't want to, like, naysay or make the game sound like it's frivolous, because indeed, there is a big difference between a skilled player at this game and a non-skilled player at this game for sure, because the skilled player will know all of the different spell combinations that he needs in order to succeed to complement his personal playstyle, his or her personal playstyle, whereas somebody like me, who is an amateur, will do very, very poorly at this game. And so I've only done... Well, I've got another profile, and I think I've done five or six playthroughs. I've beaten one or two bosses. I've fiddled around with the spells a little bit, but I think I've only discovered like 25 spells in my playthrough. And so this should do reasonably well as kind of a blind playthrough, I suppose, if you wanted to call it thus. But let's get started, because I've got a feeling that everybody's more interested in seeing the game than they are hearing me talk about it. So we're going to go to adventure mode. No, I do not want to do the tutorial. I've already done it. We're going to be playing on Wimpy today. Because this game is actually really, really, really hard. This game is nasty. It is downright evil. If you've ever played, oh, what was the name of that? Death Trap Dungeon? It's difficult on the same level as that game where it's just nasty. All the way through, bad things are happening to you. So let's go ahead and we'll play on Wimpy today because I played on regular and I just got... I got pistol whipped into submission. It was bad. I got annihilated. It was really, really ugly. I was like walking around through the dungeon with like my fingers hanging off. I had like tendons and things sticking out of my kidneys and I was like, I didn't even know there was a tendon in that, but somehow the enemy found it. So we're going to go with Wimpy. And now what you get to do is you get to choose between a wide variety of passive abilities and your class. Now the class is going to dictate what active ability you have and your passive ability is obviously going to dictate what passive ability you have. And there's a lot of like random stuff right here. I don't really know if it's something that like as much as I would like to go bit by bit and talk about each one I think it would take a little bit too long considering we've got about like what 20 of these to four by five yeah so we've got 20 classes right now and we've got 20 passive abilities and of course you're gonna be unlocking new ones as you go along too and so the game just gets utterly incredibly complicated at a certain point once you start unlocking things and figuring out like what you like and what you don't like and there's a lot of different ways to play this game because each class and each passive really sort of fundamentally changes the way that you play your class I mean there's things that are mundane over here there's things that completely and totally adapt the play style of your character from the ground up it's sort of an interesting way to start the game out and I do like the fact that it's very customizable you can kind of go through and do whatever you want Alright, so we've got the Dryad. 80% of all damage taken is healed over 20 seconds. However, when you take damage, it's increased by 200%. So if you wanted to live on the edge a little bit, I think that'd be a good call. I like the Orc, so damage is increased by 1% for every 2 life missing, and it caps out at 50% damage. I like this one because I get hit a lot. I mean, I'd like to try and just like convince you that I don't get hit, but I do. I get... I get the beat down, laid down upon me, and my face gets all swole. It's ugly. So we'll go with Orc today because I'm familiar with it. I like it. It's one of my favorites. There's all kinds of stuff here. So I, if you get the game, I definitely recommend panning through all of these. I, I just don't know if it's worth dedicating like an entire chunk of an episode. It'll probably take me 15 minutes to go through every class and every ability. But just be aware. We'll do some... So for example, this guy has equine energy. So it means that when you pick up a health pickup, you get... 11% move speed, up to 11% move speed, up to 15% defense, and up to 60% knockback buff each. And so you get a huge buff each time you pick up a health pack. However, every time you get hit, it reduces the buff. So it's kind of like this little tug of war situation between you getting hit and you picking up health packs in order to make yourself stronger. There's also things right like multi-class, or I'm sorry, multi-cast right here, with this, which is the Blessing of the Chimera. A 7% chance to spell cast a copy of the spell every single time you cast. That's actually pretty cool. The bonus cast triggers unique effects separately. I might try that one. Never mind. Let's try that one right there. And then with the classes, there's just all kinds of good stuff. I mean... There's Bards, which has Distracting Melody, which is an active ability when you press the Q key. It means for five seconds it'll play a song and nearby enemies are stunned. There's the Highwayman, who looks a bit piratey to me, to be honest. He doesn't look like a Highwayman. He definitely looks like he's been sailing the high seas. He's got his bandana and his tricorn hat on. 
He applies poison to an enemy, slowing them, increasing amounts as the poison does damage. There's release the spirits for the spirit keeper. Summon eight light spirits that blast from your location. They distract enemies and have a very large light radius. I like Rise of the Undead. I use this one quite a bit. Corpse Creeper. He allows you to summon two zombies that distract the enemy and then they explode in a poison cloud, which is pretty awesome. But let's try something different today. Let's see, what does the War Diviner do? He resets the battlefield, teleports all entities and destructibles in the room to a random spot. Eh, that might backfire on me. The Rogue Magus, or Magi, or whatever you want to call him, Double Shot, fires two current spells with no cooldown. Eh, that seems a little lackluster. I don't know. I bet the cooldown is really, really short on it. What does this guy do? Shout and throw a mighty weapon in front of you. The shout slows nearby enemies by 25. Eh. Let's see here. Divine Protection causes every source of damage to create a damaging Nova of energy for two seconds. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And I also like Paladins, so I think that's a pretty good call. There's a mummy? I never even noticed there was a mummy. A swamp mummy. That's to be distinguished. I don't think a mummy would hold very well if you left it in a swamp. It seems like that humid environment might actually be a little bit non-conducive to preservation, but whatever. A Tomonic Warlock. Let's just pick something so that we can play the game. And then down at the bottom down here, we get to pick what our starting spell is going to be. All kinds of different things right here, from the slow and the heavily damaging to the rapidly casted yet not quite so damaging. Chaos Bolt would be the one that I would probably stay away from. I think Chaos Bolt just casts in a random direction, and it's really, really difficult to rely on in the early game. So I'm going to go with Spark, since that's one of my favorites. And off we go. Off we go. Oh, I didn't do a passive ability. Apparently it didn't. There we go. Off we go. All right. And I think this is actually going to work out pretty well for us. So this is what the game looks like right here. You control with the WASD. This is your left click ability right here. This is your right click ability. And these two are cast when you press one or two. And so this right here, let's see how long. So that's got a 30 second cooldown. Oh, and it only lasts like a second. So you really sort of want to time that one out just in case. So essentially what we'll want to do with that spell is we'll want to cast it right when we're about to get run up on. Let's destroy some of these crates right here. And so as you can see, it's a little bit Diablo-esque as well, where you can just sort of like cast in any direction. I mean, there's a lot of different influences in this game. We can press the tab key to open and close this little readout here, which tells us what we have in our inventory. I can open up our inventory right here, which just opens up a whole new bag of worms of things that I'd have to explain. But basically, these are all of our stats right here. You can go ahead and you can pause it right now if you wanted to take a look. These are our rune levels. I haven't quite like figured out what these do just yet. It probably said it in the tutorial somewhere. But I was eating breakfast while I did the tutorial, and so I was kind of munching and crunching and not paying attention very well. So I've been sabotaged by my stomach once again. Up here, we've got combiners which allow us to combine spells. And so it's almost a little bit like Light Crusader. I don't know if anybody ever played Light Crusader on the Sega Genesis, but you could combine the different elements to get different spells out and they were pre-prepared. Well, in this game, you combine them and it'll give you another little pickup like this that you can just drag and drop off into your inventory over here so that you can cast it whenever you want. And so typically with my left click and my right click, I prefer to have something spammable. And then with my one and my two keys, I tend to keep like buffs and AoEs and things like that so that you can get more work done when you need to. Let's go ahead and have a look around. Okay, and so this room appears to have a bunch of evil warlocks in it. So I'm going to get going, unleashing some of the lightning dock on them with all the fury of the emperor that we can muster. Not to be mustarded. To be mustarded is pretty good, too. I mean, I prefer that most of my food be mustarded. I really do enjoy mustard. Like, I've got a real problem with mustard. It's It needs to go on everything. Especially if you've got, like, the Dijon or you got, like, spicy mustard. See, I don't even keep it related to just, like, simple Heinz mustard. I mean, you can throw any type of mustard you want on my sandwich, and I'll probably be pretty happy as long as it doesn't have those little bug chunks in it. Like, there's some mustards that come along that have, like, little brown chunks in them. I don't like those. I'm not down with the little brown chunks because they get stuck in your teeth, and then you got to, like, brush right after. And you know what? If you have to make, like, a bathroom trip specifically to brush after a meal, like when you're at work or whatever so that you don't have big chunkies in your teeth, I don't know. It's almost a little bit too much sabotage, I guess. Oh, my God. Now, every enemy in this game does do something completely and totally different. Like, they've all got their own skill sets. They've all... I'm just going to run in circles. Oh, but that might backfire on me. Oh, no. So, they've all got their own skill sets. They've all got their own castable spells, and they've all got things that they do. I'm just going to run in circles a little bit longer. And you do have to learn. Some of them are more complicated. Like, for example, some of them have multiple abilities. They'll throw a spell at you, but then at the same time when they die, they'll put, like, a poison cloud out. Just, like, lots and lots of different enemies to be found in this game. Like, this guy right here, he teleports, and then he fires projectiles at you. 
So he's got a little bit of a variable skill set. Ooh, we've already got a rune combiner. That's really, really good. There it is right there. And so we got a double combiner. That's going to allow us to take two runes when we pick them up from anywhere on the battlefield, just about anywhere anyways. The ones that land in the gutter or in the sewers, I don't tend to pick those up. Is he, like, resistant to lightning? Why is this taking so long? This is actually a little... This is hurting my pride slightly. I mean, I really do feel that I am a superior wizard here. Okay, so there's a health pack right there. That'll help us out because we did lose a little bit of health right there. We'll break open all the crates. I would highly recommend that you make like UPS and you just break down all the packing that you possibly can. Although, ignore the reassembly part because they assemble boxes too. But all the boxes that you have to break down, go ahead and do it because all of the power-ups will stay in this room until later. And so what you see over here on our little map is it'll have like a health icon on the room if you leave a health icon in there. If you find a rune, it'll put a little rune icon, and so essentially, all the stuff is there for as long as you're going to need it. Until you go to the next floor, it stays there, and so you can come back and get it later if you find yourself in dire need of a lovely, juicy little heart. Well, I assume that the hearts are juicy, I don't know. Whenever I pick up a health pickup, I would assume that it's like a lovely little gusher of life. Oh, and this room has actually put a debuff on me, so if you look at the top right corner of the screen... It has confused my aiming position, and that's a result of this little guy right here, this little brain thing. I don't know. It's like a little floating sentient tumor or something. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's got to go because it's making me confused. And you see how I have two targeting reticles? That means that I will randomly fire my spells between those two, and it's it's a pain in the ass. It's a very real pain in the ass. Now, these skeletons, we actually have to, we have to stomp on them right there. There we go. Let's Since I'm going to take damage anyways, I might as well get the Holy Nova going. Uh, and they come back with full health. That is unfortunate. And so what we have to do here is we have to run in and stomp on them. That's how you destroy the skeletons. And it took me a little while to figure this out. Not like a super huge amount of time, but I did have to figure it out the first time. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's slow down for just a moment. It appears to me as though these skeletons are coming back. We may want to step on them a little bit. And so by stomping on the spell, I mean, it's it's disrespectful, but sometimes you got to stomp on the dead body of someone you've slain. I mean, meh. No mercy for the dead, I suppose, in order to get rid of their bones, which are laying all over the dungeon. Never leave your bone laying some random place. It's a terrible idea. Somebody might come by and just pick it up or chew on it or something. You never know. Oh, my God. That would have been the time right there to use my Holy Nova. Okay, so let's step on that skeleton right there. I'm gonna do my best to try and avoid... We haven't picked up any... Ah, he came back. Okay, so there's a fire rune right there. There are runes of just every variety that you could possibly think of. There's like fire, there's kinetic, there's water, there's wind, there's lightning. I mean, there is a lot of stuff in this game, and it's gonna take you a very, very long time, and I think that's gonna attract like a certain sort of player that enjoys the metagame and very much enjoys working towards like a certain build. Because for the majority of this game on each playthrough, you're going to have a build in mind that you're trying to move towards. So for example, I would prefer to work around this lightning spell since it's my favorite. Let's step on those. There we go. You may notice that I'm also getting XP. It's filling up this little blue bar over here. Every time you level up, you get like a perk that you can choose. Or you can take one out of the grab bag, which means that if you don't like any of the two or three that you've drawn. I think every time you level up, you get a choice between like four perks. And if you don't like any of those, you can randomize your choice and it'll just like reach down into the bag and grab whatever for you. So at least you've got some kind of last ditch effort at getting something you might like if you indeed just absolutely hate everything else that's on your list. The only thing I need to look up is the rune levels. That's the only thing. I think it just makes spells constituent parts of those runes more powerful. So for example, with every spell... Let's say that, uh, it's hard to explain until we've actually done a little bit of spell crafting, but anyways, when you craft spells, let's say that I have a spell that uses water and also uses fire. Now that might seem to be anticlimactic, but indeed, those two spells right there do create a new spell for you. It creates, I think it makes like a, a dihedral, like, it makes like this weird swirly spell of water and fire. It's actually pretty awesome. Ooh, we got another container. I almost never get this many containers, so I am pretty excited about it. Now, what you could do in that case is that fire and water, respectively, would contribute their own parts to the spell. Once I finish killing these things off, okay, so we're out of the room and now I can explain it fully. Let me break open these crates, though, so that maybe we can get ourselves a juicy heart container. There we are, so a beautiful, beautiful heart container. So what I mean by this is that if you mouse over this spell right here, you'll see that it has stats down below like damage, range, knockback, cooldown, and global cooldown. Essentially what this means is if you look next to range, 
it's got the shock symbol for the shock rune next to range it means that the shock aspect of this spell controls the range now if you had a spell that was water and fire water might control damage and fire might control range which means that as you contribute more and more spells to this so let's say that i had another shock rune over here i could stack it on top of this one right here and it would increase the range or let's create let's go ahead we'll make ourselves so there's a fire spell right there and then if we wanted to buff this up, you see right here, if we add fire runes to this, it'll increase the damage and the dot damage over time. So there it is. And so you can see right there, it's been buffed up a little bit. Now, if you look on the right hand side, it says fire two plus zero. The plus zero is from over here on the rune levels. I'm almost positive that's how it works. And these are just passive buffs. So as you level up, you can actually, let's say that I wanted to work on a shock build. I would want to passively increase my shock runes as much as possible so that I was only using shock spells whenever possible. So there it is. We've got ourselves a fire and a lightning spell now. And what's cool about this is we can actually kind of spam these out as we see fit. If I just run around holding down both clicks, there it is right there. And you can see that I've actually pretty substantially increase the amount of daka that I can lay down on the enemy and the amount of daka that I want to lay down is a lot I mean I am definitely a person that loves to vehemently batter my enemies with every lovely substance that I can get my hands on or I guess my gauntlets on right now because we're wearing gauntlets but our hands are inside the gauntlet so I feel like that's kind of a duality type thing like it's one covers the other so I think we could go either way with it there's also a mirror right here. We're kind of, our character is really, really ugly. Like, he's a solid, like, 1.2 out of 10. And so we're actually just going to go ahead and destroy that mirror because it upsets him. And there it is. We've wiped out every single destructible location in this room. Let's go upwards. What's in here? Okay, so we've got another, we've got some kind of debuff. Come. Oh, never mind. It's my targeting debuff from that floating brain. I don't know what that mirror does. It's not making it very clear to me because we don't have any extra debuffs or anything. So I think I'll probably just keep it. There we go. So we got rid of the floating brain. It wasn't a floating tumor. I knew it. It wasn't carcinogenic. That's good. It's already deadly enough in this dungeon without everything being carcinogenic. Grab that health pack. Blow open some of these containers or these rubble piles. That's going to be a mind rune. I haven't messed around with mind runes at all. I've played with fire a couple times. I've played with lightning a couple times. And I've played with earth a couple of times because <laughs> geologist, you know, if there's rock spells available, I usually go for it. I think our next playthrough, I'm not a big fan of the rock skill set so far. The few things that I've tested out, oh, these guys have magic missile. Magic missile is scary because it can be spammed out very, very quickly. Usually by me, though. The enemy's not quite so good at it. Now, you notice how above their head they're getting that little green text right there that says cooldown minus. That means that every time they cast, it resets the cooldown slightly on all of their abilities. And so if you're trying to run a lot of long duration abilities, you may want to think about running magic missile. Just because every time you cast it, it lowers your cooldown. So, you know, just something to think about if you are using a lot of long duration spells where you're not going to have globals up all the time. These little guys, are he really needs to... This is going to be like our, our... Oh, we leveled up. Cool. And he gave us a little theme song too. Elemental Mastery. The minimum and maximum rune levels for fire and water runes are shifted to minus 9 and 11. You can get your passives debuffed too in this game. So you can end up with like permanent curses and things. Soul Rip. Killing humanoids releases a piece of their soul which replenishes health. That might actually be really, really good. There's no downside to that. Exterminator. You get a critical damage modifier versus bug types or you can ghost walk every 30 percent of your life lost you become phased i'm gonna go with the soul rip i mean ripping out my enemy's souls does seem pretty awesome that's that's a very threatening skill set i mean if you have a soul you kind of want it to stay inside of you what even happens if you rip that out who even knows is there any way to even validate that it seems to be steeped kind of deeply in supernatural mystery so i'm not really sure even what would happen if you ripped out somebody's soul in here we've got a bunch of zombies, not too much of a threat really, we don't want them near us, they're very very slow, and so we'll just kind of beat them back, not to be confused with beating them off, as I have seen that mistake made many many times, in fact I posted that on Twitter the other day, where a developer had said, the goal of the game is to beat off the enemy as best as you can, and I was like wow that game kind of got precarious right there, that is a very very, that's a promiscuously described game, <laughs> and obviously they didn't mean to, but it's it's kind of a funny description beat back is what they were going for though and so it's it's a confusing it's a confusion in syntax that gets made so you got to be careful about it careful about it there's actually a whole bunch of heart rooms right here so i think we're going to be in really really good shape i don't think there's our first floor was pretty robust right here sometimes you get a first floor that doesn't have a whole lot of 
rooms on it at which point you don't really level up much but I think we're off to a pretty good start right now the bosses are very very difficult on the level of like Binding of Isaac difficult where some of them are actually quite challenging if you haven't seen them before and you aren't really sure what their mechanics are so I'm guessing that while we're doing very well right now I'm almost going to guarantee you our death will come by a boss because I haven't seen all the bosses yet and I'm not sure how to react to some of them so I may react by screaming throwing my hands in the air and just kind of wetting myself over and over and over again creating kind of like a pee or a piss layer in my pants to sort of insulate me from the enemy's spells I found that urine does a great job at actually stopping fire spells I mean you can judge me if you want I mean they call me squeaky at the mage academy because it tends to drip down into my shoes and then you kind of get like this squeaky sound when I walk wow we are getting a lot of health pickups this is utterly insane this is the greatest ability ever this ability has basically guaranteed that we're going to make it at least at the first boss, which what more could I ask for? At least I won't look like a complete and total ruby noob. Oh, those actually don't give you very much. Okay. So that explains it a little bit better. However, this build right here, Soul Rip, would go great with that ability for the Centaur, where they get a buff every time they pick up a health pickup. There you go. So that's what I mean. There's a meta game to this game where you kind of want to move towards things that benefit your build and the passives that you selected. Now there are kind of choices for noobs such as the ones that I picked that just kind of randomly make you double cast and things. But if you're actually experienced with this game, for example, right there, I sort of missed out. I could be picking up all kinds of buffs right now because meh. However, I do get hit a lot, so I might be debuffed, so I might actually just be evening myself out. Like right there, I just got hit in the face by a light spell. These are light elementals as far as I know. They fire really, really fast spells that are very, very difficult to dodge, especially if you're point blank with them. But unfortunately, lightning has kind of forced me to be right next to them. I don't really have a choice. I have to get close to them. So this room over here, why is this room all smoky? That's because it's an event room, and if you beat an event room, basically this is kind of the game's answer to quests. You'll go in there and it'll just be a challenge, so you'll have to kill everything within a certain time limit. You'll have to kill enemies in a certain order, or you'll have to do just any manner of random challenge you could think of. And when you complete it, you get a bunch of XP and you also get a challenge bonus, which is essentially just like a free perk. So they're well worth doing. Let's go ahead and have a look in here. We've got Arena. The strongest can only prevail in the face of others. Prove your might by defeating other strong foes. Okay. That seems alright. We've got two minutes. I think we can probably... He doesn't seem that bad. How much worse is this going to get, though? That's my first question, is that each one does seem to be getting exponentially stronger. Like, he took a lot more hits than the first one. Oh, wow, he's shooting giant puffs of evil black darkness at us. He's so evil, he's firing concepts at us. He's no longer even using, like, real spells. It's just like, I fire the concept of hatred at you. And so we're actually already on the final guy, so this challenge may work out pretty well for us. We want to stack him up with as many of our dots as we can from our fireball spell. Oh, no. He's firing, like, rings of ice at us or, like, rings of water. It's not quite as terrifying as the Johnny Cash spell that's related to it. It's the actual elemental opposite. There we go. So we completed the event. So we can either get 5% damage, we can get an Entropy Rune, we can get a Knockback buff, we can get a Double Container. I'm going to go for the damage buff, I think. And I'm just going to take that because 5% damage is nothing to laugh at. It is nothing to slouch about. It is indeed something to be very, very excited about. And so we've beaten the first floor. I'm probably going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Runers. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care of everybody. And as always, I do.